Hey there kiddos, Graceless here again, and today I would like to discuss the Founding Races, sometimes called Elder Races. There are many many different races throughout the Malzahn series, ranging from giant lizards to humanoids and even demons. However, when referring to the Founding Races, the book is most commonly referring to the four races associated with the Malzahn world. These four are the Four Cruel Assail, Kichain Shamal, Jagut, and the Amas. These races were around for hundreds of thousands of years, and their interactions between each other are slightly lost to the sands of time. We know that there were many overlaps in their times of prominence, but to what extent is unknown, especially regarding the Jagut. This is where Erickson's background in archaeology really seems to excel as this is a very accurate depiction of what would happen across the entire world. There's multiple continents, and different races have control of different continents at different times, so it's a little hard to pin down all the details. But first up is the Four Cruel Assail, and honestly, they creep me out more than any race in the Malazan universe. A character named Udenas describes one during a dream sequence. The cold made the air brutal, blinding him, shocking his lungs. Through freezing tears he saw, amidst a faint blue glow, a tall figure, skin like bleached vellum, limbs too long and angular with too many joints, black, frosted eyes, an expression of faint surprise on its narrow arched features. The clothes it wore consisted of a harness of leather straps and nothing more. It was unarmed. A man but anything but a man. See what I mean? Chills every time, just ugh. Alabaster skin, solid coal black eyes, blue blood, and joints. Too many joints. To make matters worse, these joints aren't just for show. They have so many joints that they can actually wrap an arm fully around an opponent's limb. Their arm, not just their hand. Even their chest is hinged, allowing for their entire body to fold in uncanny ways, which, when combined with their speed, made them nearly impossible to hit with anything. Even if they do receive damage, they have preternatural healing that makes them virtually unkillable by ordinary means. They revel in martial arts, getting up close and personal to deal death with their bare hands. Think that sounds pretty intense? Well, in addition to this, they also have an obsessive perversion of justice. They followed an ideology of adjudication, and set themselves up to be the arbiters of other races. When conflict arose, the Four Cruel Assail would achieve peace on both sides. It just so happens that in order to achieve peace, they would deliver destruction to all parties involved. You would think that pissing off every other race would work out great for them, but surprise, it didn't. Particularly, the Kichain Chamal gave them a hard time, and along with a separate event called the Just Wars, there wasn't much left of them to have a civilization. Have you ever wanted giant magical dinosaurs with swords for arms in your fantasy world? Well, Maul's on Book of the Fallen is the series for you then. The Kichain Chamal are a eusocial species similar to bees and ants, which means they have a caste system with the queen instead being called the matron. Each nest has their own matron, and she decided how many of which castes to give birth to. Not a lot is known about the different castes, but let's just jump into them. The matron is the mother to all Kachain within the brood, though giving birth is very taxing on her, especially to create the stronger castes. There is, however, only one matron at a time for a given nest, and she is the sole user of magic. The source of her magic is unknown, but it is said to be born of sounds beyond human hearing. Kel hunters are said to be the firstborn of every brood, and they were created out of a desire for quick and deadly soldiers, similar to how cavalry is used. They were essentially very large raptors standing at twice the height of a man, however, instead of hands, they had enormous curved blades fused to their forelimbs. A long serrated tail allowed them to lean over and balance, while their powerful hind limbs carried them at speeds more than twice of what a horse is capable of. This combination of speed, power, and deadly weapons would definitely make them a terrifying enemy, and would have made Jurassic Park even more of a horror story for me as a young child. 
Next are the Vagath Soldiers and Jan Sentinels, which would act as medium and heavy infantry respectively. Physically, they were more sturdy than the Kel Hunters and would stand more upright, wielding weapons and armor. They would serve as the main fighting force during a conflict, but their creation was very taxing on the matron, so she would usually keep their numbers low, especially in times of peace. Drones take the place of workers within the nest, helping to keep clean and provide food for the other cast members. They are essentially servants. Drones can also be thought of as a blank slate, as they could be given pheromones to physically transform them into another cast. However, this is difficult and time-consuming, and would only be used in a desperate situation. Lastly, the Chagall Assassin is probably the most deadly and terrifying of the casts. They towered at twice the height of a Kel Hunter, though much more gaunt, and had large, folding, retractable wings at their backs, allowing them to fly. A matron would never create more than three Chagall at a time, and they were made in such a way that there could be no alliance among them, limiting a chance for betrayal. As a bonus to their flight, they could also see body heat, allowing for detailed tracking while remaining unseen in the sky. For natural weapons, they had retractable talons which were kept slick with a neural venom allowing a deadly strike with contact, and when the time came, they could also cloud an enemy's mind. Communication between these castes was conducted via scents and pheromones, which elicited a sort of telepathic communication. All of the castes were subservient to the matron, with the possible exception of Shigal assassins, which had been known to kill a matron if she was not performing well enough. As formidable as the Kachain Chamal were, they had many vast conflicts throughout their lifetime. Powerful threats from the Four Cruel Assail, Jagut Uprisings, and the Tist Invasions caused the Kachain to be greatly weakened. In an act of desperation, several matrons gathered together and resurrected the ancient species of the Kachain Naruk. The Naruk were a lot smaller than the other Kachain and had shortened, stunted tails, allowing for them to stand upright a lot more easily. This earned them the nickname Short Tails among scholars. They were more intelligent and technologically minded and created the giant Skykeeps. Yes, techno dinos that built giant floating mountains such as Moonspawn. Unfortunately, the Naruk were a lot more willful and independent than the matrons had expected, leading to a massive civil war between the Short Tails and the rest of the Kachain. Along with the exterior conflicts, the civil war broke the Kachain Chamal as a civilization, but as you read, you'll find out more. The Jagut are a relatively original creation of Ericsson, especially the name, which has no basis in anything, he just kinda liked the way it looked on the page. Appearance-wise, they are very tall, with green-hued skin and large lower tusks that would stick upwards out of their mouths. While I was reading, I would imagine them to be tall, skinny Warcraft orcs. Jagut seem to have been lorded over by the Keychain Shamal as they developed, possibly even being enslaved. Though, as the Jagut gained strength as a race, they gradually began to push back against the oppressive Kachain. Their race all had access to the Warren of Amtos Falak, making them incredibly strong as individuals and exponentially more strong as a race. Amtos Falak is a Warren of cold and ice, and most glaciers in the world are actually the result of a Jagut ritual. The history of Jagut as a civilization can be rather frustrating to study, as they never seem to have much of a civilization, but also, there was a point in time where they had to have millions in their population for something called the Death War. After that event, the Jagut mindset seems to have changed greatly. They began to view gathering in large communities in a negative light, believing that it led to a hunger for more dominance, power, and tyranny. Thus, they abandoned cities, preferring to live in solitary towers by themselves or with close family members. The stoic and pragmatic viewpoint of the civilization led to the fall from prominence of the Jagut. Unfortunately, this lifestyle did not stop all lust for power, and some individual Jagut sought to impose their will over beings and even nature itself. These Jagut became known as Tyrants, with a capital T, and were worse than you might think. They propped themselves up as gods to the budding Imas populations, misleading and enslaving them as a people. When other Jagut found out about one of their kind becoming a tyrant, they would gather to stop them. However, this would not save their race from the wrath of the Amas.
Modern humans in the Malzahn world descend from the Amas. They were a hardy and stout species, strongly adapted to the Strong Age, and I typically envisioned them as Neanderthals based on their description. They were a very emotional people, with incredibly strong familial and tribal ties, and this is what led to their downfall. The Amas were very naive and innocent, easily misled by other races, which is where the Jagut come in. By the time the Amas came on the scene, the other founding races have all fallen, the only one with a little bit of presence left was the Jagut. But due to their solitary life, the Amas were relatively ignorant of them. These conditions created a large playground for the very few Jagut with tyrant desires. One tyrant and his demise is described in Gardens of the Moon. One whose blood was poisoned by ambition to rule over others. This Jagu tyrant enslaved the land around it, all living things, for close to 3,000 years. The Amas at the time sought to destroy it and failed. It was left to other Jagut to attend to the sundering and imprisoning of the tyrant, for such a creature was as abominable to them as it was to the Amas. This was not the only tyrant who had control over the Amas. Some took sick pleasure pretending to be gods, enslaving and making the Amas worship them. When the Amas pulled the curtain aside to discover their entire people were being manipulated and enslaved, something essential inside of them broke. The betrayal was felt in every fiber of their being, and so they began to plan a worldwide ritual that would destroy themselves and the false gods, allowing their children to live in a future without pain. At least that's what they planned. They created a vow to destroy all Jaguts so there could be no more tyrants. The ritual scoured away their emotions and humanity, making them lifeless and undying, and allowing them to cross the great glaciers that Jagut would conjure in defense. These Amas became known as the Tilan Amas, and this was the start of more than 300,000 years of tragedy for them. Alright kiddos, hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about the founding races. Obviously I tried to minimize story spoilers at least, so hopefully nobody is too upset. Thank you for listening, and if you have any more questions, or have a topic you would like to hear about, please leave a comment below. I'll see you next time with more info on gods and ascendants.